Hooke's law relates spring force to displacement using a formula, and that is that the force of a spring is equal to negative kx. Okay, again, where fs is the spring or restoring force, k is the spring constant, and x is the displacement. Now, why is there a negative sign there? That's what I want to know. Um, so there's a negative sign because it accounts for the opposite direction of the spring force in x. Because anytime you displace a spring, you're displacing it in the opposite direction of where it wants to go back to, right? So if I want to move this spring to the right, then I have to apply a force to the right, but it wants to go back to the left. The displacement is from the left, and it wants to go back to its equilibrium that's to the left, okay? So k is always positive, so if it says negative kx, I don't want you to think that you have a negative spring constant, because that's not possible. Um, it's always positive. So if you don't have any info given regarding direction, then you just choose a direction to be positive, and then indicate if it matches your force or your displacement, okay? So the negative is really there just to make sure that we get all positives in the end, but we know that our displacement will be opposite than our force, so just choose one of them to be positive and one will be negative, and that's just how it goes. And so if you get a negative answer, then you know that um, it's going in a negative direction, and if you get a positive answer, you know it's going in the positive direction. Okay, and that's why we have the, the negative sign there. It's just to kind of help that work out because we know that uh, force and displacement will always be in opposite directions when we're talking about the displacement of a string, spring. Not a string, a spring. Okay, uh, so that's, that's Hooke's Law. That's really all there is to it. It's just negative kx, okay? And so just remember that if you displace a spring, the force is in the opposite direction, and so this negative is just there to get you the right direction, okay? Because we are back to force, which is, of course, a vector. We care about such things in physics, do we not? So if we have a vector, then we want our answer to be able to give us not just magnitude, but also direction, okay? So if I'm looking at this situation, so if I'm going to say right is positive, then I'm pulling this to the right, so my force should be positive, but of course my displacement is wanting to go back there. It's the wanting to go back to its equilibrium. This is its equilibrium right now, and so of course here my force will be positive, and my displacement would be negative. So again, if I look at f is equal to negative kx, if I know my force should be positive, then therefore I need to put a negative in for x in order to get that positive, right? And then therefore negative times a negative is a positive and we get that positive force. So it's just so the directions work out correctly for your force and your displacement. So as you may have noticed, there is a direct proportionality between force and displacement of a spring, right? The more force you give it, the uh, more the displacement goes up, and that is directly proportional. So if uh, it's directly proportional, if I graph the force um, put on a spring and its displacement, the graph will still look like this, okay? Actually, technically it'd be going down, but like... We're going to go with magnitude of the force and magnitude of the displacement. It would look something like this. So this is your force displacement graph. Okay, so force versus displacement for a spring. So those two are directly proportional. Now we can actually use a graph like this to find the um, the elastic energy uh, equation. Do you remember what it is? It's one half kx squared. This is how you derive it. This is how you get it, okay? So first of all, we're gonna start with uh, our work energy theorem, and that is the fact that work is equal to change in energy. But look at this here. We have a force displacement graph, and we know that the area under a force displacement graph is work. How do you know that? Well, think about it. You have force times displacement, and then here, since the triangle will be one half. So this is your area. 
And that's something we did go over um, earlier in the unit. So uh, the area under a force displacement graph is work. So here we know that area is equal to the change in energy. Ooh, this is going to help. Okay, so how would I find the area of this? It's a triangle. So what do I got to do? It's one half base times height. Okay, one half base is displacement um, and height is force, but I'm actually going to put the force first. So I'm going to do one half height times base because guess what? Exactly the same thing. Because uh, that's nice. That gives us a little something, but we just learned what is Fs, what is the force of the spring? We learned that it's Kx. And I'm going to use um, just, um, again, we're only looking at something where we're looking at the magnitudes. We're actually not looking at direction right now. Um, so yeah. And the displacement here, we call that x when we're talking about a spring, right? So I'm going to substitute Kx in for force. And I'm going to substitute x in for displacement. And look what I get. I get 1 half. Here, this guy's kx. I'm multiplying it by x. Oh my goodness, look what happens. We have kx times x. That's x times x, which is x squared. So it's 1 half kx squared is equal to the change in energy. So what does that tell us? That just tells us furthermore that um, energy of a spring is kx squared. And the force of a spring is k times x. Okay, so remember, this is energy. And then this guy's force. A lot of people get those two equations mixed up. Um, remember, so when I'm looking for energy that a spring, uh, the potential energy of a spring, then we're using 1 half kx squared. If we're looking at the force exerted by a spring, we're using negative kx. Okay, so please, please, please remember that. Okay, so let's do one more example using this equation. So we have five people with a combined mass of two, 275 kilograms get into a car. The car's four springs are compressed a distance of five centimeters. So determine the spring constant of the springs. Assume the mass is distributed evenly to each spring. So what does that mean? It means all of these 275 kilograms are distributed evenly across four springs. So I actually need to divide that by four so I can s figure out how much um, mass each spring is or have, has exerting on it, right? Because this is actually a force of gravity kind of situation. So there's 68.75 kilograms per spring. Because again, we're assuming that this mass is distributed evenly. Why is that important? Because we know that all these people have a force of gravity on the spring. But of course, then the spring is pushing back up on them. And so we have a, the force of the spring there, right? So there we go. And that's important because we know, therefore, that if these guys aren't moving at all, they're not moving up and down, which we're assuming they're not because usually cars make you go back and forth and right and left and horizontal, but usually not vertical. So we're going to assume that they're, they have no acceleration here. So why is that important? Because if I need to find the spring force, because what do I want? I want the spring constant. I have their displacement. I don't have the force, but I have enough information to find the force. Okay? So if I look at Newton's second law here, the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. Well, here... There's no acceleration. We're assuming that they're not accelerating up and down. Uh, and that means gravitational force minus the spring force is equal to zero. All right, so that means that my gravitational force is equal to my spring force. Now, why did I make downwards positive and upwards negative? Well, it doesn't really matter which way you do it, but here's what I want to say, because once I substitute my um, equations in for FG. We know FG is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration. And we know spring force is negative kx, but here's an annoying thing with Newton's second law. I already accounted for that negative. The spring force is negative, right? I accounted for that right here. And so since downwards is positive, then my x is positive, right? Because the displacement is downwards. Um, and then, of course, my force is negative. 
So I actually already accounted for that negative here, just like when we were doing this in um, dynamics unit and we, you want to make G negative 9.81, but we had already accounted for that. So we actually already accounted for this negative here because we counted for it there. So actually, it doesn't matter here, okay? And I know that's really, really kind of messes you up, but it just doesn't. So when you're using Newton's second law with spring force, you can actually just use kx because you are accounting for the opposite um, directions of force and displacement by summing the forces the way you do, okay? And this will work for either direction. So keep in mind, I already actually accounted for the fact that k that uh, the for spring force is negative, so I don't need to count for it again because then I'd just be undoing what I've already done. Okay, here we go. We have mg is equal to kx. What are we looking for? We're looking for k. So we just rearrange for k. It's mg divided by x, okay? Um, so my mass, what was that? Uh, oh, right. It wasn't 275. It was 68.75 because, again, we're just looking for the spring constant for one spring. Um, and this is there's four springs here. And we decided that or we assumed that the mass was distributed evenly. So the mass was actually 68.75 kilograms. G, of course, is always the same. Never changing. X is five centimeters. Um, I don't think we want centimeters. I'm pretty sure we want meters there. So make sure you divide that by 100, get 0 0.05 meters, okay? And then we get a spring constant of 1.35 times 10 to the negative four newtons per meter, okay? Gave it to three significant digits because that's all we need. We were given four here, but we were only given three with the displacement. So I only wanted to use three. Well, I only could use three. Again, neighbor's dog. Sorry. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for Hooke's Law. And uh, if you've been following along with the whole unit, that's all for work and energy as well. So that's everything. Um, yeah, good luck. Go study.